step that you want to do is you want to preheat your oven. The way mine works, take your right hand, any finger, click bake, click the plus sign because you want it at 355, and then start. And now it says pre, and then it will beep when it's ready. What you want to do is grab your muffin tray and place it down on your counter. And also you want to grab your muffin liners. I have here these green reusable ones. And you want to put this pile entirely in your left hand and use your right to grab and place so that they fill up your tray like so. Just go in any order that you want and fill up your muffin tray with the muffin liners. It just looks like this when you're done. What you want to do is you're going to take your muffin tray in your right hand, just pick it up and move it off to the side so you have room on your counter to place down some bowls that you grabbed. You're going to need two of them, one for dry and one for wet. And we're going to start with the bigger one. So use your right hand and put the small bowl off to the side for now. Just stick to the big one and you'll come to that one after. Actually change what I just said and shove both bowls to the side because we have to put down our cutting board and knife to do some chopping. The first ingredient is an apple. So I grabbed it with my right hand out of my apple tray. And you peel off the sticker. You put it down. And you take your knife in your right hand, hold the handle like I'm doing, and use the blade to press down on the apple and cut it in half. You can hold it in your left hand for stability. Place it skin side up and again in half on both pieces so that you have quarters. Now take any piece, pick it up in your left hand, and use the blade to carefully go down the middle and take the core out of the apple and up to the side for composting. Do that for every piece of apple. Take off holes in the left hand and cut the core. So you remove any seeds that fall off your cutting board as well. You don't want that in the final dish. Okay, last core. Okay, so now what you're gonna do, pick any piece of apple, put it skin side up, and slice into additional slices. Then put your slices together and keep and slice the opposite direction, pressing down the blade that you get little cubes of apple and do that for every one of your quarter pieces. So cut into thirds, turn the other way and go one, two, three, four. Cut into thirds, turn, one, two, three. So you have four more chunks of pieces. That one kind of big, I'll cut it again. And so is this one. Any big pieces you can just go through and do that. Okay, last quarter. Boom, your apple's cut. So what you're gonna do now is take that big bowl back. This is for dry ingredients, and you're gonna drop in that apple. Just take your hand, pick up the pieces, and transfer it. Perfect. Next, you're going to grab your rhubarb. Each piece is called a stalk, and you want three in total. Put it down on the cutting board. Do a little chop of the ends. They're going to go away in your compost pile. And then, with the rest of it, we're just going to cut it. I'm thinking thirds lengthwise. That was horrendous. But anyway, you're going to hold the blade. Of, hold the handle, I mean, of the knife, and with the blade, you're just going to make lengthwise strips. So, going from the top all the way to the bottom, the long way. Cutting pieces of the rhubarb. Once you've done that, you can put your strips together 
and then get it at the apple. We're just going to cut cubes. Okay, these pieces are different sides, so let's separate that one for now. Just stick to my smaller ones. And once that's been cubed, I'll bring the bigger one back. And continue to cut it. Hold it left and right hand, just slicing down like so. Scoop up the rhubarb with your hand and put it into the same bowl as your apple. We're considering it a dry ingredient. Now you're going to grab the second stalk, again cut off the ends for your compost, hold the handle with the knife and use the right hand to make lengthwise motion top to bottom the long way. This time we're just going to do half. and then cut cubes. Now what you're gonna do, just take your right hand, grab your cutting board, and put it away somewhere out of sight. And also right hand, we're gonna bring the big bowl full of rhubarb and apple back into play. So, I've now grabbed my quarter cup. It's the one with the one slash four. Can you see that on camera? And we're going to grab a bag of almond flour. Open it up by pulling on the ziplock. And then we're going to take the handle of the measuring cup in our right hand and use the copy part, the little circle, to stick inside the almond flour bag, measure out a quarter cup, dump that into our apples and rhubarb, and then do that two more times so that we have three quarters of a cup in total. Next, we're going to shove the almond flour to the side and bring in a second bag. This time it's coconut flour. Pull on the ziplock to open and measure one quarter cup of it. So the same way you did for the almond you want one quarter cup. And don't forget to reseal both bags if the flour stays fresh and also is not going to spill in your cabinet. The next ingredient we want to put into our muffins is the sweetener. I have mine in this container here. So to open it, we're just going to place it on the counter, right hand on the silver part, which is the lid, and you can hold the main cylinder at your left for support, and just twist it right, twist, 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 the lid will pop off, and you can place it down on the counter. Then with the right hand, pick up, we're still using the quarter cup, the one, the one four measurement, hold the handle, and the circle part we're going to stick in to the sweetener and measure a perfectly full rimmed quarter cup and drop it into our bowl. Tap it out to make sure you get every bit of sugar and flour, like so. Oh wait, one more thing. You also wanna put the lid back on your sugar, so pick it up off the counter right hand onto the carton or jar, I mean, Left hand to hold, right hand to twist, and then you're good to put it away. Almost a lot. Now we're gonna grab our baking powder, hold it in the left hand and use right hand to just pull off and then place on the counter for the lid. And in our right hand, we're gonna pick up the half teaspoon. It's the one with the one slash two. Looks like this. Hold the handle, circle part goes in to the carton, and we're gonna measure three portions of baking powder into the bowl, so we have a teaspoon and a half in total. 
put the teaspoon down, pick up the lid, put it back on, and then you can put the entire thing down on the counter and exchange it in your hand. You're holding cinnamon now. Hold the left hand, right hand on top, twist off the lid, put it down, pick up your half teaspoon in your hand, handle part, and stick the spoon into the bottle. Measure it out, dump it in, and do that twice so you have a teaspoon total. Come on, get on the spoon. Hopefully yours is easier than mine. Come on. There we go, I got it. Put, put the teaspoon down, pick up the lid, twist it back on, and then you can put it down on the counter to be put away. Next, I have picked up my whisk, which is the tool that looks like this. Can you see? There we go. And we're gonna hold the handle, which is the red part on mine, and we're gonna stick this part, I don't know what it's called, but the main whiskey part into the bowl. Hold the bowl in your left hand, the red part's in your right hand, and we're just going to whisk together in order to remove any lumps. And they're talking of lumps of flour or sweetener, things like that, because obviously you can't pulverize your fruit by whisking. That's not possible. So just to remove lumps of flour and sweetener. And also it helps to coat the, the fruit, the rhubarb and the apple. pieces of fruit keep getting stuck inside your whisk, you can just tap uh, inside the bowl like I've been doing and it will lock them out and back in to the bowl. If one piece of fruit is particularly stubborn, see this one apple, just put your finger in and poke it through like that. Now pick up your bowl of fruit in your right hand and just shove it off to the side. Then bring into your work surface a different small bowl. This one has to be microwave proof. And also your tablespoon, which is the one TBSP one. Mine looks like this that I'm using. And also you want to have grabbed your butter. Mine's in a container, so just use the right hand to pop off the lid. And you're going to hold the handle of the spoon and use the scoopy part to measure three tablespoons into your dish. You can pick it up in your left hand and hold it if that helps you to scrape. And hold the bio dish, I mean. Put it back down. Use the finger and the tablespoon out of my left hand. Just go like this to help get the butter out of the tablespoon. And now we're going to microwave this. Microwave, at least on mine, take your right hand and pull open the door of the microwave. Then, still using your right hand, we're going to pick up the bowl of butter and put it in. Then right hand, close the door. We want to melt that butter, so I'm going to go by starting 30 seconds. That's the 3 button, the 0 button, and the start button. It'll beep when it's done. Has just beeped you can see it says end so right hand open the door and we have successfully melted the butter so let's take it out careful it's hot put it down on the counter close the microwave door don't spill it I almost did be careful closing that door and then walk the butter back to your work surface where you were before back at our work surface after melting the butter and now what we're going to do is bring back that smaller bowl that we had before Remember separating big from small to cut the apple? Put that smaller bowl on your surface and then pour in the butter you've melted. Like so. You hold the butter bowl in your right hand and just dump it into the bowl. Then put it back down. Now you want to grab an egg in your right hand and tap the shell on the bowl. Take your left hand and your right hand, use your thumbs to peel away. You're gonna drop the whole entire egg, white right and yolk into the bowl, and then shell, just place it on the counter. Grab your second egg off of the counter, same process, right hand, tap on the bowl to crack it. 
both hands, thumbs, peel the shell, drop it into the bowl, and put the shell on the counter. You'll compost both of them in a minute. Next thing you wanna do is grab your bottle of vanilla, pure vanilla extract, hold it in the left hand, use the right hand to take off the lid, and then put it on the counter. Take your half teaspoon, this one that we used before, and measure out one half teaspoon. Hold the handle, pour the vanilla into the swiggly part, dump it in like so, teaspoon down, pick up the lid, put it back on the vanilla bottle, and then put the vanilla bottle down on the counter. Next, you're gonna grab your half a cup, so that's this one, and you're also going to grab your carton of either sour cream or plain Greek yogurt. I'm using yogurt. Put it down on the counter, right hand to peel off the lid, and place down on the counter. Then, again, right hand, you're gonna pick up the handle of the measuring cup, and the big circling part, we're gonna stick it into the yogurt and measure one half cup full of yogurt. Then dump the yogurt into your bowl. Tap, and maybe run your finger to help get everything out. Put your measuring cup back down on the counter, maybe in the empty butter dish so you don't dirty your table. Then pick up the lid of the yogurt in your right hand and just click it like so back onto the yogurt. So pick up again that handy dandy whisk handle or this red part in your right hand and this part here stick in the bowl and we're just going to go until there are no lumps. You will have smoothed out your sour cream or yogurt, you will have beat the egg and it will just be a smooth consistency. This one should be easier to whisk because there's no fruit chunks like in your other bowl. Okay, once it's all whisked out, which doesn't take very long, it's an even uniform from texture really pretty quickly, you're going to bring back your bowl of apple rhubarb dry ingredients, and you're going to, in both hands, no sorry, not both hands, left hand, pick up the wet ingredients bowl, with the egg in, etc. that you just made, and you're going to pour it carefully into the apple rhubarb bowl. Just like so, we're going to dump it in and you can use the whisk to help scrape down the sides of the bowl. Just to make this easier, I'm actually going to get the spatula off my counter, which if you don't know that this tool, the little flat one, we're gonna hold the handle and we're gonna use this part that I'm showing on the camera to scrape off the bowl. So we're holding the smaller one in our right in our left hand, hold the bowl in the left hand, hold the spatula in the right, and we're just going to scrape across the bowl so that all of our wet ingredients get into the fruit. Now you're going to put the empty bowl in your left hand down on the counter. Remove the whisk from your big bowl into your small bowl. And then we're going to use that spatula to stir. We're folding the wet into the dry and fruit. So we have a uniform batter. The only chunks you should see separated out are the, the fruits, the apple and the rhubarb, so poke through a uniform batter. So just keep stirring until all the dry and all the wet have melded together. Keep 
stirring and scooping over like so. Can you see the motion that I'm doing? With your right hand holding the handle, I'm just going to keep going like this to the mixture. Oh my gosh, that smells really good. You're going to love this smell when you make them. It smells really good. Remember to scrape down the sides of your bowl so you don't miss any batter. and sufficiently stirred our mixture. I'm just going to grab my right hand and move the bowl a little off to the side so that I can, with my right hand, bring back in the muffin tray from before. And actually, let's swap that swap that order for you so you can see better. Very close to the camera, bowl further away. For you, it wouldn't matter, but for me, it does. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the spatula to scoop the batter into the muffin tray. So hold the handle with your right hand, Scoop up some batter and then just dump it into the muffin tin. If you want to pick it up in your left hand, take it out of its slot, then go ahead, do that. Pick up any drops. And then you want to keep repeating that. Pick up the green cup in your left hand, bring over your spatula scoop of batter and fill up the cup. Scoop, fill, and we're gonna keep going until we've filled all the cups. Now that I've filled all the muffin cups, there's still one more step left to do until you can put them in the oven. So first things first, we're just gonna take the tray on our right hand and shove it to the back so we have room on our workspace. And if there happens to be any batter left in your bowl, and that's completely fine. You can just bake a second round of muffins. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take yet another bowl and we're going to place it down on our work surface because we need to make a topping or a crumble for the muffins. First ingredient we're going to measure into our bowl is our sweetener. So take the cylinder, right hand on top, left hand holding, and just twist the gray lid off and then onto the counter. Pick up in your right hand uh, our tablespoon. It's this one here, and I've washed it off. All the butter is gone. A nice clean tablespoon. Then we're going to hold the handle and this scoopy part. Stick into the sugar. Measure it out. And drop in. Then put it down on the counter. Pick up the lid in your, in your empty right hand. And twist on. Then you want to put it aside and grab the cinnamon in your left hand. Cinnamon. Twist in your right hand the lid off and down to the counter. Pick up in your right hand our half teaspoon. Again, that's this one. And you want to measure one half teaspoon of cinnamon. So simply put in, handle in your hand. Grab your cinnamon and drop it onto the sugar. Now pick up the lid in your right hand and twist it back onto the top of the cinnamon carton. Put down on counter. Now pick up in your right hand the bowl that you just put sugar and cinnamon in and just move it anywhere off to the side because we have to bring back that cutting board from earlier. Now grab your container of walnuts, hold it in your and hold it in your left hand while it's still on the counter and use your right hand to twist off the, the lid. It works the exact same way as the sweetener. Put down on the counter. Pick up in both hands and just shake it out of the opening onto your cutting board. Just get a portion that you think is good enough, I'll say that much, onto your cutting board so that you can chop them up with a knife. Hold the handle, this part, and use the blade to chop. Just going to press down like so. You can even put two fingers so you have extra support. Don't do that. I just yeeted it off the cutting board. Don't do that. but. Otherwise, follow what I'm doing and coarsely chop up these walnuts.
to. You, you can keep chopping and make them smaller, but for me, I think this is a good size. So I'm going to grab my half a cup. I've cleaned it off from when I used it previously. And it's this one here, the one class two, if you can see. And we're just gonna put the chopped walnuts in and fill the entire thing. If you don't have enough, just, just pour out some more and chop again. But in my case, I measured it perfectly. What I grabbed was an exact half cup. Estimation skills on point. So now with your half cup full of walnuts, use your right hand to bring back that bowl. Level off the side, you put your sugar cinnamon. And with your left hand, grab that half cup and dump your walnuts into the mixture. Then, with the bowl on the counter, grab that spatula out of the the main mixture, just scrape it off so it's a little cleaner. Take that spatula into your bowl and just slight mix so the almonds, not almonds, sorry, the walnuts are coated. Coat the walnuts in the cinnamon sweetener. As I missed a step, you want to pick up the lid in your left right hand, in your right hand, hold in your left hand and put it back on so your walnuts don't spill and go bad in your cabinet. Then clear out your workspace, get rid of everything except your bowl of walnuts, and then you have room to bring back that tray that you shoved to the back, your muffins in their cups. And what you want to do is you want to hold the walnut bowl in your left hand and with your right hand just stick in your fingers and grab a little handful that you can sprinkle onto the top of each muffin. So just keep grabbing handfuls and we're topping each muffin. Try to be as even as possible, but it's probably not going to be perfect. This angle is not the best, but just bear with me for it. What you're gonna do now is you're gonna pick up your muffin tray in your right hand, walk it over to your oven, use the left hand to open the door, then put both hands onto your tray so you can place it into your oven that you have preheated, remember, to 355 Fahrenheit. Then close the oven door, and you wanna set a timer for 20 minutes. How that works on mine, right hand, any finger, click timer, then click the little plus sign until you reach 20 minutes, and then you click start. All you have to do is wait for your muffins to bake, and check on them when your timer beeps. Okay, so I've just pulled the muffins out of the oven. Gloves on, open door, grab tray, put tray down, close door. And now I want to make sure they're actually done, so I grabbed here a toothpick. I've got it in my left hand, and it's just pick any muffin. We're going to stab the muffin. And if the toothpick comes out clean, which mine did not, okay, they're not done. Got to put the gloves back on and put this back in the oven, let's say for five minutes. Try that. The muffins have just been put back in the oven, gloves on, open door, tray in, closed door. And now I'm going to set another timer, just to recap you with timer button. Press plus till you get your desired amount. I'm going to say for five minutes and start. All right, so the muffins are back out of the oven. Let's stab again and see how they're looking this time. Clean. How about this one, just to be certain? Still clean. The muffins are done. So I just carefully took all the muffins out of the baking tray onto a cooling rack to cool before eating, and it also opens up the tray so I can make batch two of the muffins.